And I will call them one by one. Inguna Urtane, you are Head of Spatial Planning, Department Ministry of Environment Protection and Regional Development of the Republic of Latvia. Inguna, please take a seat. You are the first, so you can choose any seat. Kai Trumpler, uh, Head of Unit Maritime Spatial Planning, Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency, Germany. Please take your seat. I'm calling you one by one because I'm not sure I know where you're sitting. Thomas Johansson, you've already been around, so I'm not going to introduce you. And uh, take your seat. Katarzyna Krusvda. Are you here? Oh, you are. I'm sorry, I missed that. So we will again listen to Jacek, who will be replacing Katarzyna. So please take your seat. I'm not going to introduce you again because you're so well known, by the way. Tina Tillman from uh, Ministerial Advisor at the Department of the Built Environment. Uh, uh, Ministry of Environment of Finland. So you have been at least partly participating, I know, Tina. Annie Konsap, advisor of the Planning Department, Estonian Ministry of Finance. There you are, Annie. Uh, so please take your seat. There are two seats. I think one is for me. I don't know if I'm going to use that. Annie, please take your seat. And Peter Dam. New Nautical Advisor, Danish Maritime Authority. So here we have, here we have the, the panel, and you just say hello to each other. And those, these persons who you realize are representing the authorities in, those, in, in each of the countries in various positions and capacities. So they have been part of Baltic Scope. Uh, and they have learned a lot during these, these times of the, of the project. And as we are not all been involved in Baltic Scope, they are here to share their experience. And the, good, the important thing when you share experience is that you don't tell only the great good stories. It was so nice, we learned to know each other, and we really like each other. We had good wine and beer together, etc. But also share the experience of where things got difficult, where you failed or almost failed. You know? So that's, that's part of it. Uh, and I will, there are two microphones being carried around each part of the room. And if somebody is very eager, I would love that, you will get the floor immediately and ask a question to these panelists. So they, they sort of share that they've been all in Baltic scope, but they have different national experience from what they have done and what has been done. So you will probably hear uh, different stories from, from the participants. Does somebody want to start? I thought, you, I thought I told you in the beginning, be active, proactive, or provocative. I can't hear that. So, okay, if you think about it, because I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask the first question, and I want you to all, I think we start with Thomas. So, has Baltic Scope contributed to develop and strengthen the, your national MSP process, and in what way? So it's not just, yes, it's not a yes or no question, but in what way? Thomas will start, and the rest will follow. Thomas. Uh. Of course, yes. Uh, I think the most important uh, thing that we have learned, perhaps, I don't know. I, I'm, uh, I have uh, a lot of staff who's working, but it, it is uh, 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 these uh, different systems that uh, we use. Uh, we, we actually we were working on the, the, the same uh, directive, but. Uh, because of national uh, legislation, we do it in not technically the same way. But that's an uh, important learning from our side. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, now. So, from my, my understanding, the most important was that the Baltic Scope project was the real planning process, and not a simulation of planning process, because, for instance, for this Central Baltic case I represent, uh, all three countries were, was, um, and during the project time were in the actual uh, planning, national planning MSP process, and uh, how it contributed to our national process. The most important thing I would like to say is that uh, the most important contribution was that uh, we uh, convinced our sectorial stakeholders how important is the maritime spatial planning uh, because of they, ha they had the possibility to see that other countries also is doing the same and they are also 
claiming for the marine space and they are uh, uh, making a priorit prioritization. So that convinced our sectors, which are from the very beginning quite resistant, those traditional ones, the fisheries, for instance, and, and, and shipping, that helped a lot. Mm. Kai. Yeah. Yes, uh, on the danger of being repetitive here and uh, echoing too many of the sentiments that have uh, already been said uh, by Jacek uh, and, and Thomas just now, is um, um, to give you a little bit of background. Um, I'm coming from, I'm a lawyer, as some people know, I'm coming from uh, maritime delimitation. And um, the rules on maritime de delimitation are um, so that uh, if you have two people who are like, unrelated and um, two geographers who look at the same coastline, they're supposed to come up with the same boundary line. Um, th that's hugely important there. It's, and it's very different in uh, maritime spatial planning. And uh, the Baltic Scope has really made this uh, a key experience for me. Um, with, the, with the same policy objectives and the same data and the same input by stakeholders, uh, um, different planners will come to different conclusions. And they are all reasonable. Reasonable people can disagree on the conclusions you have in maritime spatial planning. And um, that was one of really the key uh, um, moments for me in, in uh, a Baltic scope um, to, to realize that. Um, and that being said, I also, um, I'm also comfortable now to say that I think uh, all the planners in our neighboring countries, from Poland, from Sweden, from Denmark, if, if they would plan the German EEZ with the same input that we have, I'm, it would look different than the plans that we come up with. Uh, but still, there'd be good plans, and they'd be uh, really uh, uh, putting the objectives into place. So um, uh, I think that is uh, one of the pos most positive things I can take away. Okay, thank you, Kai. Jacek. Okay, so now I will speak with the words of Mrs. Krzywda, who is responsible our ministry for maritime spatial planning. So about important things for Poland, we started our MSP process. And I must say, one of the biggest challenge for us was there are black holes. You know what is a black hole? No, something which is impossible. I mean, we even don't know what is there. And unfortunately, we have such black holes in the Baltic Sea. I mean, there are areas which are claimed by several countries, at least two countries. And now how to plan it in your plan? So here in Baltic Scope, we start to manage this process. How to make planning without... Uh, uh, final decision who owns the territory. And I must say that we have a nice experience now, and I am pretty happy that the Baltic Scope gave a way for us to, to, to tackle such difficult questions. Thank you. Yeah, please, Tina. Okay. Thank you. Axel, you know Finnish Ministry of Environment is not part of the Baltic Scope project. I know, that's what I indicated. <laughs> but you okay. have seen it from, out, from yes. you know, not too far away. Yes. Okay, but Finnish Environmental Institute is participating mm. in the project yep. and we are very happy for that. And in, adi in addition, mm. we have been able to send uh, some uh, uh, regional council uh, special planning directors to be as observers in the project meetings, some of them. And um, uh, in Finland, these regional councils, they uh, they are responsible for maritime spatial planning, so the case is uh, a bit different in mm. Finland than in other countries. The state is not doing the plans, but regional councils. And I can say that I'm so happy when uh, about two weeks ago in, uh, in a meeting with the regional planning directors, one of them said that, you know, they are doing in Sweden like this, the cross-border planning. So, uh, although Finland does not have any own uh, case area in the project, so our, um, our planners uh, now know uh, about the cross-border cooperation, and I'm, I'm really pleased of that, and it's, it was, uh, I was so happy to hear that. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Tina. Thomas is you are, you, Finland is mostly welcome to the next project. <laughs> Thank you. We will definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So here we go. Thank you. And, and then Annie. Uh, yes, um, I think uh, one of the most important um, 
um, re results from Baltic Scope for Estonia is that uh, maritime spatial planning is um, um, more known in Estonia uh, and more known amongst our stakeholders, uh, amongst our uh, national um, institutions, ministries, agencies, and so on and so forth. So that um, they, they actually know or are starting to know what we are trying to do and uh, what kind of um, um, help does it give to them, what we are doing. Okay, thank you. And then, Peter. Yes, good morning. Um, from Denmark's point of view, uh, I will start a little different uh, and uh, reflect a little on what was said here this morning. Um, there was two words I was, I was going to mention. Then the wor first thing I've, it was you, Axel, or Thomas, which said the process is very complicated. It is complicated, but the other word is that we are learning, and I think that was Jesek who said that we are using the tools of MSP. We are learning how to use them, and uh, we are getting better. And uh, I really think that we are strengthening uh, the cooperation over the borders. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you warm up with your questions now? Yes, please. We need a microphone because we are being recorded on, on CNN. Uh, where is the microphone? Oh, please. Yes. You'll probably get two microphones, but you only need one, I know. So please, uh, your comment yeah. or question to the panel. So thank you very much. And, and uh, absolutely, I'm talking as a uh, uh, participant of this project from science side. And uh, um, my comment concerning uh, uh, differences, it is, uh, my interpretation is that everything is starting with the vision. And when we started this project, then uh, we realized how different are national visions around. And, uh, and the project for me uh, was that we harmonized a lot of our common vision. We get the common vision and this is the basis for the, for the uh, harmonized approach we have already today. And uh, just uh, to be more literary, uh, referring to the Seneca's words that if we don't know the harbor we are aiming for, no wind is favorable for us. It means that having the common vision, more common vision during the, by the end of the, pro, end of the project was one of the best outcomes of that. Thank you very much. Could I, could I just ask you, because I, I yes. failed again now, I didn't ask you to introduce yourself in the yeah. beginning, because you're well known, I know, but yeah. there are people from outside of yeah. the Baltic who may not know you. So just... Thank you, Thank you very much. My name's Robert Tapps. I'm coming from Estonia, Estonian Ma Marine Institute, University of Tartu, and uh, already for several years I enjoy the possibility to be part of the of the maritime special planning from science side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I think you, uh, there are members of the, of the panel who wants to comment on that, and please do that. Uh, thank you, Robert. Um, I'm always happy to hear that Robert is always talking about vision and goals and objectives. That's very important. But I actually wanted to argue a bit against it, saying that uh, I think we all have the same vision, uh, which is a good environment for the seas and uh, increasing economy. Uh, I think we just have different tools of uh, getting there. And that's what we're trying to do, to understand the ways that each of us is trying to achieve the goals we actually have. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, good. that's a good comment. Anybody else? You have yes, the microphone. So yeah, please. I will agree, uh, agree on uh, any. Um, yeah, we know the objectives. Uh, the hard thing is to get there. 
Yeah. Okay, so uh, one, yes, please. You will get your microphone and, and don't make the same mistake as I did. So you yeah. introduce yourself. Okay. I introduce myself. Yeah, I'm Anders Andersadis from the bonus program. I've been a fan of, of MSP for a very long time. I want to provocate you. I was two weeks ago, I was in a no, first North Sea Open co Science Conference, and there were a lot of talks about the MSP problems in the North Sea, but the approach was very different from what we hear here in the Baltic Sea region. That was very much, there were, uh, there were very nice, very detailed maritime spatial plans, but they all started and ended within the national borders. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, oh, we are doing it so much different in the Baltic Sea region where actually we build the construction starting from the, from the vision or, or transboundary or whatever are the terminology and, and you, you use. But then, and now I come to the provocation. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, is it so actually? Maybe this is just my impression, my, my optical illusion, because of all these, we, we had a Bolt Sea plan and, now, and, uh, and we have your project, Baltic Scope, and, and we have a research project now about space going on, and this is all about transboundary. And we are talking so much about transboundary, but things go on nationally, maybe, in reality. Your reaction to this? So please, that's good, I love that. Get more provocative and we'll, we'll get more of the debate and Ingina is already there. Uh, I would say that uh, this is a difference. You have to speak the into the mic and see to the... Okay. okay, so there is a difference among those projects you mentioned and the Baltic uh, scope because one of our main outcomes or recommendations or what we tried to aim uh, to achieve during our collaboration process was to to come to those transboundary perspectives for those four sectors we worked on the energy environment fishery and uh, sh shipping we aimed at but pro probably will not succeed 100% uh, uh, but that is one of the main conclusions that this is a need if you would like to have a very like um, a very productive trans transboundary consultation those sectors need to make those projections not uh, across the national borders otherwise we can't collaborate in a pra pragmatic way yeah that's the one of the main conclusions out of our collaboration thank you Ingina. Jacek and then Thomas okay so well my answer to you, Andres, will be, I don't know. I mean, uh, through the col collaboration, we know the mistakes which can be done. And we know each other. That's very important. Eh? So, 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 so at least we can see the problems. Now, MSP is a policy and stakeholder driven process. So I'm pretty sure the plans will be very, very different. You know, in line with our planning cultures. Now, the key question is, what do you mean by coherence? Because if you mean by coherence that we are heading towards the one vision, yes, definitely. I am pretty sure that through our collaboration that, that we are talking about more or less the same. But if you think about, the, if you think about coherence, that on the borders there will be no big gaps, you know, two highways going differently. I am pretty sure that there will be no two highways going differently, but I cannot ensure this. But if you think about uh, let's say something more deeper, I mean in terms of methodology, in terms of, I, 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 I am pretty convinced that this is impossible because we are different and we must accept this. That, that's, that's my thinking. So it, it depends on the level of your ambitions. Uh, scope helps us a lot, you know, mm. to, to find between the authorities you know, at least the ways when the problems can be what we should put uh, focus on and things like that. Thank you, Jacek. Thomas? Um, I would say uh, everything ta takes time. Uh, we were two who talked about uh, 25 years ago in the uh, speak bef before. So I will say that uh, we started with the MSP process in 2004 and uh, 25 years ahead, 2029. Then we can came back and see the real impact, the real result of this process. It takes time. 
and uh, Jacek, you, you <coughs> sometimes say that we are so different, but uh, Poland and Sweden are not so different today compared to 25 years ago. <laughs> That's different. That is definitely true. Uh, what about Tina and your views on this? I would like to highlight the cooperation between countries, what we have had in the Baltic. Uh, uh, and um, also, we established already six years ago this WASAP Helcom Maritime Spatial mm. Planning Group, where two different organizations is co doing cooperation. So I think little by little we, we learn to know each other and um, that is what is cooperation about. And um, so, of course, uh, different countries, they have different uh, legislation and different methods and, uh, and uh, they do the plans uh, according their own legislations and uh, that, that is something which, um, which is the situation. Uh, but anyhow, I'm sure we can, as um, Annie said, we already have agreed about the good status of the Baltic Sea waters, what, what we all should mm -hmm. uh, aim at. And, uh, and we already have uh, made all kinds of scenarios and visions. We can, in the Baltic, agree of these things, I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Yes. Just a brief. Yeah, well, very briefly, what, what Tina said. Uh, I do believe that we are progressing, uh, but still we have two big challenges to overcome these border problems. One challenge is that we are still in the group of the planners, which means that we must go beyond this. We are doing this. There are pro uh, projects like Baltic Lines, Baltic Grid, but, but we need to invite all those impo important people to look on the sectors which need pan-Baltic coherence. And at the end of the day, what is necessary, perhaps it's a political agreement on all countries. I am quoting now Andrzej Cieśla, but political agreement of all countries, how we want to use the Baltic Sea. Now we have such political agreement on the Helcom level, but there is no, nothing about energy, about cultural heritage or some other issue. And this is necessary if we treat this as a common resource. That was very brief. Thank you. Thomas, very brief. Yes, very brief. Of course, we have much more to do. Uh, green infrastructure, we don't talk, we have a seminar after that. And that's why I have a green tile today. And I saw on the picture, I have the same last year. So it's, it's an important question also that we don't really, we have no sector interest in that. We have, have to handle it in another way. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Oh yes, up, up there in the, in the mid-sector. Please and introduce yourself. I think it's on, but no. Hello. Yeah, okay. you're on. My name is Joseph from University College Cork in Ireland. Uh, my question is, uh, the Baltic is one of the good examples of transboundary working. And one of the major elements of transboundary working is to develop joint actions. And by this, I'm talking about joint projects as a way of fostering transborder cooperation. Now, my, my question is, through the the Baltic projects, the transboundary projects, has there been any specific ex examples of joint projects or joint actions that has been developed to say that we can say this is an example of transboundary working? And by this, it could be even synergies or projects in the areas of aquaculture or offshore renewable energy that has been developed to serve as examples for some of us coming from other areas. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good question. And who wants to start answering that? And it's not only yes or no. Nobody wants. <laughs> yes, Peter. Uh, I will have one example of how we have uh, tried to solve some issues uh, over the borders. Uh, it may not answer your question quietly, but uh, it's a good example that we had between Denmark and Poland. Uh, for many years we had a, a border issue. We have brought that up. Uh, in the pre uh, this pro project, I said this is an issue we have to deal with because we have an area 
uh, huge area south of the island of Bornholm. Uh, what are we going to do with that? Because uh, we have a task of planning the whole Baltic. Um, this, uh, I, I think that Poland and, and Denmark was very stubborn through, uh, through the time, but actually during this uh, cross-border uh, talks, uh, we have managed to uh, build some kind of dialogue with the uh, um, Polish foreign minister and the Danish for foreign ministry. Um, so this is an, an example how we can cooperate and we are also trying to cooperate on other things like uh, gates for cables uh, over the borders. Uh, but um, it, it's very hard to see, it's easy to see the, the whole Baltic as, as such, as, but you cannot wipe out the borders and our differences. But it would be nice sometimes. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, Jacek. Sorry for speaking too much, but uh, okay. One example from the Baltic scope. It's about the middle bank. So there is a very nice area in the middle of the Baltic shared by Poland and Sweden, and it can be used in different ways for shipping, for windmills, for um, even nature protection. And now, I want to make a distinction between the formal process of consultation between countries. We started such a process with all, all, all our colleagues came. And for example, Sweden said, okay, perhaps we will prefer navigation through this instead of the windmills. But in, if you have a project, if you have time to meet with people, if you have time to have a cycles of discussions, then you can realize what is behind given country thinking. So for example, in uh, in this middle bank, there was a Swedish claim that the, uh, there should be a routing, and not on north, but uh, not on south, but on north. And we try to understand it, and it takes a lot of time to find what are the real reasons for the consent of such statement. And, and projects help a lot because then you know the background of the country, and even you can deepen it, and you can find a person or institutions who made a claim. In formal consultation, it's much more difficult. So the project is a great vehicle of understanding each other. Thank you. Thomas. Yes, uh, I will continue. Uh, for example, we have uh, uh, in the project uh, some uh, cables discussion with uh, uh, Latvia and, uh, and Germany. And we, as a responsible authority for MSP, we don't handle that at home in Sweden. We have our agency, Svenska Kraftnet. Well, and because of this project, because we get it in time, we could go to Svenska Kraftnet, and they had time to f think about this before the formal consul consultation will come. So I think it's, it's good. Uh, it's an example that MSP questions influence other agency and other politician uh, area. Thank you, Thomas. Annie? Uh, one thing I wanted to um, kind of bring out is that what Baltic Scope uh, taught us uh, is that uh, you don't always have to have a conflict with the, your neighboring country in order to talk to each other. It can, uh, <laughs> because uh, somehow, somehow it feels that conflicts are kind of written into the whole MSP process. That we're starting from, you have to talk to each other in order not to have conflicts. You can all, always talk to each other in order to have synergies or co do cooperation in something. Uh, the second thing I wanted to bring out is that what Baltic Scope taught, I think me, maybe someone else as well, uh, is that we ki kind of need these kinds of uh, forums uh, throughout the whole MSB cycle or cycles. Uh, that uh, it's not uh, we don't only have to talk to each other during um, the. F I don't know, putting together the plans. We also need to talk to each other when we evaluate them and monitor them later. So it's an ongoing process and, and uh, getting to talk to each other in this way is I think the most easiest way to, to, to handle this. Thank you, I love your comment. I think you, it should be written in the final report. You don't need to have a conflict to talk to each other. Any concept, like that. <laughs> I'm looking at Ingela. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Ludwig, I saw you waving. You just need a microphone. 
And then I know that Andre is also waving, and there is somebody up there. And now we're going to close this because you will have to start working. You thought this was a walk in the park, but it's not. Yes. Okay, Ludwig. Thank you. Um, because I, I, I also wondered about all the projects, and I think you are doing, making progress, doing the analysis together and the cooperation. To make it a bit more political and get your work really off the ground in time for 2021, I have one question both addressed to Annie, Tina and Kai. You are holding the presidency of the EU, uh, respectively in 2017, 19 and 20. Do you already have a program dedicated to integrated maritime policy and maritime spatial planning? Thank you, Ludwig. Go ahead. Who wants to start? I can start. Yeah. Not that I know of. <laughs> Who wants to continue? I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure we do. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, um, but I see. But you don't know it. <laughs> I, I'm not at liberty to talk about it. No. Um, my, uh, no. My ministry is sitting right here, and I'm sure they're working on it right now. Okay. Uh, as we speak. Great comment. What about Tina? Well, my answer is: We should have. <laughs> <laughs> we should have. So you have three answers, then, Ludwig. Uh, so Andre. And then there is somebody up in the back who will... Uh, uh, Andrzej yeah. Cieślak, uh, Maritime Office in Gdynia. I'm also the co-chair of the Herkom Vasab uh, MSPO group. Uh, and, uh, answering the question about the influence of projects, I wanted to comment on that too. Um, I think that uh, well, uh, the Baltic Sea has a tradition of, quite a long tradition of uh, uh, consecutive projects which introduce the concept of MSP first of all at all into the discussion in Europe or in the world even. And going on from that, uh, we have uh, well forced in fact the uh, ICZM working group to introduce uh, a maritime spatial planning as a, one of the indicators of an effective ICZM. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's uh, how these uh, projects work. And in our space, in our Baltic space, I think that it's important to note that, for instance, the participate proje project resulted in uh, uh, our guidelines on uh, Public participation and transborder. Does it work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And transborder uh, cooperation and consultation, uh, which have been adopted uh, by both uh, Herkom and Vasa. And uh, uh, also, uh, some indications, uh, of course, most of the work was done within the uh, working group, but uh, uh, there were some support from the uh, projects uh, when we developed the uh, guidelines for ecosystem approach. So uh, yes, if there's a, a, a certain line in the projects which are adopted, then uh, there's quite a good value uh, to be then implemented within quite separate, quite different planning processes in each country. Of course, each country has a different process because it has its own tradition and own a bit different sea and own quite different people inside the country. Uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, I also would like to ask the panelists Jacek uh, slightly, uh, um, slightly uh, had um, mentioned the idea of the uh, practical spatial common vision for the Baltic Sea. Uh, what is, what are your thoughts on the needs for something like that, and uh, when will it be achievable? That's my question. I'm certain it's not during my, I would say, presidency of the Herkon Vasab, which ends now, but the future. Thank you, Andre. Does somebody wants to answer or you want to do it at all? We are running out of time, so I'm being a bit unpolite as moderator. Thomas. This, this question of vision is, is very important, but I, I can recognize we have a, 
just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the EU Strategy Forum in Stockholm, and it was present a kind of vision. And I think uh, the question of a vision, it's, it's bigger than MSP. Uh, MSP can be a tool to, to serve or press the vision's work ahead, and then we can take uh, take the knowledge, shall I, take the uh, influence from the vision to back to the MSP work. So it's, it's a difficult question. Yeah, it we need to have it high on the agenda and def different. So thank you, Kai. You got 30 seconds before we go up with the microphone to the top of the. Yes, just really briefly. Um, coming back to Rona's presentation, uh, I, I will also quote a German chancellor. Um, uh, Helmut Schmidt, who said, people who have visions should go see a doctor. Um, <laughs> but um, so I do think that m maybe when we talk to overarching visions, we have to realize our limitations as planners and say, we are working in the engine room to make this work like on the nitty gritty basis. And uh, maybe it's up to other people at a higher level uh, to develop these visions and not for us. And we can lay some groundwork for that and prepare and, and help them. But uh, the overall decision for that it does not rest with the planners, yep. it rests with somebody else. That's, that's a good point. Thank you. So please introduce yourself. It's so Hi. dark up there, I can't even see you. you know? Sorry. I would have loved to. <laughs> uh, Bruna Kamps from BirdLife Europe. Um, so my question is for the whole panel, um, it's about, um, po mostly about lack of data. So what happens when you're faced, you're sitting together and you realize that you're missing data um, as planners and that you're uh, not able to actually uh, do your planning because, for example, you might be missing environmental data that is important to ensure um, your planning won't contradict environmental legislation. So what do you do, and especially if one of your, is one country, specific country, that is lacking that data? That's a question that is really the title of a one, one day seminar on MSP, I would say, the, the, the issues about data and quality of data and lack of data, etc. And that's, in my mind, is built into the whole MSP system. You have to address that, so it's a very relevant question. But I try to make the answers, I ask you to make the answers Short. Can I? Jacek. I, I am planning. That's it. Because if I made a plan, I am provo provocative and I will receive more data and more information. Mm. And then on the plan, I can use precautionary principles. So I can say that I don't know, so perhaps we should have different options. That's it. But I am planning. I am not stopping because I, I have no data. Mm. Because you will never have data. You know, can you imagine how much money needs to have? data on everything what is in the sea, impossible. Thank you. Uh, Thomas and then Kai. Um, I have started to, to look after data once more and do it in a, a way that we, the planners can use it. Because we have a lot of data who is in different shape, in, in different variety. And we have tried to do it in, in Sweden in a project called Symphony. Please look at uh, it at the, in the in the outside the door. Mm -hmm. Kai and then Inguna. No, ladies first. No, no, sorry, Kai. No, we have to have the right. Oh, then Tina and then Kai. Okay. I would like to refer also to the precautionary principle. And another thing I would like to say is that it's not possible to solve every problem by maritime spatial planning. For sure, there are there will be uncertainties and there will be approximations and lack of data. But nevertheless, we can do uh, the planning process. It could not be perfect for everything and will not solve everything. So that's the yeah. conclusion. Thank you. And then Tina and then Kai. I, I would only highlight uh, what, the, what the others have said, so that we never have uh, knowledge of everything. So we just have to make the plan. But in Finland, we, we have um, made a... Um, underwater biodiversity research program, 10 years program, so we have a lot of data near the coastal zones, but I think the, most of the countries is uh, lacking the data on economical zone, which is deeper and more difficult. And um, we also, in Finland, we will have a, a maritime uh, portal, uh, which will, uh, where we will 
uh, collect all possible data. So little by little, all Baltic countries will have data. Yeah. Thank you. And then Kai, you got the last word. Um, I would, I would say that. Yeah, it's on. Okay, thanks. Um, only in the most extreme cases, we uh, I would I would stop planning because usually my estimation would be, and uh, I think my colleagues agree that the benefits of of planning, even in uncertain uh, circumstances, far outweigh the risks of uh, not planning. Um, and to finish that with another quotation, uh, a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. I think my comment on this is also that when you do the planning and you know, because you have to evaluate the quality of the data and the availability of the data and the format and you know on many, many aspects, then you also have to recognize that in your plan and say this is based on or here we don't have the data of the quality and whatever we need so that you can always evaluate and next time you revisit that you will probably have more data etc so it's an it's an ongoing process i would like to thank all the panelists with a big hand for <laughs> for sh sharing their experience and i would like to thank the the audience here for asking good questions. I had a lot of questions prepared unless you were quiet, but they're all, you know, obsolete now. So thank you very much for getting engaged in this, in this very good panel. And the panelists will get a present, of course, also. So you just stand up and we applause while you get it.